Hi, my name is Partha Sawa, and today I'm going to be talking about my experience as a summer researcher with data science at the University of South Carolina's Artificial Intelligence Institute. So a bit about me to begin. I'm currently starting my senior year at Monta Vista High School in Cupertino, California, and I started working with Monas in April of 2020. It was around the time my school went virtual due to the pandemic, and I was looking for opportunities to further engage with academia, specifically related to data science and applications to policy and social good. Outside of this research, I've participated in a few data science and modeling related competitions and challenges. In my future plans, I'm hoping to pursue an undergraduate degree in some combination or subset of data science, policy, or CS. So a bit about of the technical skills I've gained during this research experience. The first is gaining more experience with Python and specific libraries. So that's NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, DateTime, sklearn, etc. And also different softwares like Tableau, and then modeling methodologies, SAR, ExoSAR, and causal inference models. In terms of social network specific, I got some experience with Tweepy for Twitter API access and Hydrator for hydrating tweet IDs to JSONs. Now, the soft skills that I learned, which I find pretty important, were effectively reading, summarizing, and presenting numerous research papers from diverse sources like PubMed, Lancet, and Nature, while also collaborating on research with multiple parties across multiple time zones, as it, it's a pain to get used to those mix-ups. And finally, processes to create and evaluate hypotheses. In terms of data science for social good, I learned how data science can be used to impact policy and various types of analyses that can evaluate policies or scenarios. Uh, I also got a bit of exposure to sectors where data science may be more effective with exploring effective altruism, which is essentially data-based altruistic decisions that, that, that are most impactful to the world. Throughout the course of this research, I've gotten a chance to interact with a number of people, such as Dr. Victor Vicente Palacios, who is a senior research scientist at Philips Healthcare Research, and Dr. Shakti Balan and Mr. Nirmal Savaraman from LNMIIT Jaipur in India. I'm also starting to interact with Solve for Good in terms of watching their webinar series and formulating ideas and learning from what, uh, from what they've been discussing. Now, takeaways and what I've learned from all of these people more specifically, such as with Dr. Palacios, the impact of creating valuable data sets like he did on COVID-19 and generating ideas and analyzing efficiency of data. While with Dr. Shakti and Mr. Sivaraman, I understood the importance of previous literature in addition to how we can adapt prior methods to current research, but also create new approaches to that research when some don't work. The overall process of conducting academic research from the start to finish was also <laughs> tremendously valuable in my opinion. And with Solve for Good seminars, particularly just to the applications of data science to solve problems in society, and effective exploration of data analysis, I found just uh, the stories of data science such as EMS optimization, but also the importance of looking for bias and actually understanding attributes of variables such as, or variables and their, their nature, such as the temporality and spatiality of them, so you know what direction you can take your research in. Now, in terms of all these skills, one of the ongoing specific research applications where I'm trying to apply these is COVID-19 policy research. So the problem is essentially COVID-19 has spread very differently in nations across the world. The Spain and India are both developing nations and with similar demographics. And COVID-19 has affected the regions very differently, even though they took similar policy steps and even at a similar time scale. So the question we want to ask is why? Now, our hypothesis is essentially that the differences in developing nations can be attributed to the differences in citizen responses to governmental policies. So that's going to be one of three things, either encouraging compliance, disregard of governmental policy, or actively encouraging non-compliance of policies. And we posit that the difference in these responses, which are sentiments essentially, can be observed through a social network sentiment analysis, and we've chosen Twitter to do so. Now, we, all, we must begin by defining a time scale on which to focus our analysis, and we can do so through exploratory data visualization. We chose the following county-state pairs between Spain and India, which are Barcelona and Mumbai, Madrid and Delhi, Madrid and Kerala, and the Canary Islands and Andhra Pradesh. The reasoning for this was essentially Barcelona and Mumbai are both financial capitals of their respective nations, while Madrid and Delhi are actual capitals. Madrid and Kerala have similar population densities, while Canary Islands and Andhra Pradesh are known to have very strong healthcare systems relative to the rest of their countries. There were some attributes that didn't work when we were trying to match up county state pairs, such as household size, where it's much greater in India, or median age, where it's much greater in Spain. 
Poverty data, on the other hand, was simply too noisy to be effectively compared between the two regions. Now, going over the first data set we're using, we're given data for 19 different regions in Spain, and that's the total number of cases, hospitalizations, number of patients in the ICU, deaths, recovered patients, and new cases, in addition to a few other attributes. With this data, prior to working as, as we are now with both data sets, we, I, was, I, did a, I spent a good amount of time doing some exploratory data analysis before pivoting. And one of the most interesting derived attributes or analyses was ICU capacity evaluation. Essentially what this means is we are given data for how many people were entering the ICU daily, but we didn't know how many people were actually in the ICU. So doing some research, I found that the average ICU uh, stay duration is about eight days, sorry, median. And using this, we can try to reverse engineer the number of people that were actually in the ICU each day and determine if the capacity was ever reached or even broken. So here we have daily ICU patients in Madrid using this method, where this red line is the, num is the limit to the number of ICU beds in the region. And the this is the projected daily ICU patients, assuming a median stay of eight days. And as you can see, it doesn't hit the bar here. So doing a similar analysis in Catalonia, we see that it does hit the bar and crosses it, in fact. Doing some, uh, with some sensitivity analysis on Madrid, it's six, seven, nine, and 10 days, we see that the limit was barely crossed at nine, though it was significantly crossed at 10 days. So the duration of the ICU, uh, the median ICU duration is indeed important to determine if the ICU capacity was ever broke, uh, bro uh, reached or broken, and how that impacted healthcare. The second data set, is the India data set, where we have the number of confirmed cases, recovered, deceased, quarantined ICU and ventilators on a daily basis. So using these two data sets, we do some preliminary visualization. Here you're, you're seeing the daily new cases in Madrid and Kerala versus time, but Kerala cases are scaled up by a factor of 100 because we want to better visualize and compare the time series and raw numbers don't matter as much to us as the rates of how COVID-19 was spreading. As you can see, Kerala and Madrid are maintaining a relatively similar time series until May 2nd. May 2nd denotes an inflection or divergence point where Kerala starts rapidly rising while Madrid remains at essentially zero. It is important to note that COVID-19 daily cases are lagging variable because of the two-week incubation period of the virus. And so based on that, we focus our analysis of social media on the April 15th to May 15th time range. I'm going to show you a few more plots of the other region pairs right now. So this is Canary Islands in Andhra Pradesh, another inflection point, Madrid and Delhi, Barcelona and Mumbai. And as you can see, there consistently seems to be an inflection point. Now, looking here at this initial hashtag scaven scavenging, we're looking at the purpose of this initial hashtag scavenging was to determine what hashtags may be relevant and use that to guide our social media analysis. One of the most interesting correspondences we're immediately able to see from this list is the return of migrant workers and migrant trains, as you can see in tweets around this region. And that did correspond to a rise in the number of cases that we saw in Kerala, as we saw in the preceding plots, which suggests that this Twitter analysis might have some merit. Our methodology here is focusing our search using a data set of tweet IDs that are filtered to be related to COVID-19. Unfortunately, Tweepy would have required a premium account, so we focused on using a data set of tweet IDs that goes all the way back to late January. And using this tweet analysis, we can use the Hydrator app with the, sorry, with the tweet IDs and generate JSONs and CSVs that contain the date, the hashtags, the user location, and the tweet content for keyword searching. Using this, we're able to analyze the differences in sets of tweets from before and after the divergent period of India and Spain, and that fortunately should be able to help us in our qualitative analysis of the differences. Our next steps with this research are simply completing our analysis and tentatively a submission to ACM CHI 2021 as an extended abstract. Some of the references I've used throughout this research are selective research papers in analyzing misinformation in Twitter conversations as we see in Sharma et al, the infectiousness of hashtags in Skaza and Blaze, and also simply try, actually using Twitter to track separate factors such as suicide risk, as in Jashinki et al., in addition to various learning experiences with deep learning, causal inference, and other data sets that I explored. That essentially concludes my presentation of my summer research experience. Thank you so much for listening.